As we've travelled around the world, one of the most wonderful things we've seen are some of the glorious heavy horses of the world. If you remember when we went to Ireland, there they had some stunning That's plough good, horses. And of course, we've road tested Clydesdale horses on the program. And I want you now to meet, this is Blossom. Now, this is an English Shire horse. And these are, I suppose, the, the biggest horse breed in the world. And these are wonderfully robust horses. I don't know, just watching them in a paddock, it's just very, very relaxing. Scott. Yeah. Well, it's probably a little bit cooler than it is down there. It's starting to get a bit of altitude. I would have thought for most people being that high up on a horse would be a little bit off-putting. It probably is, I guess, but you know, if you, if you think about it along the lines that his brain's really in proportion, no bigger than it is on a, on a little Shetland or something, it's, it doesn't need to be that scary. Yeah. What's it like riding it? I found them to be very, very sensible, very, very trainable horses. The history of the breed goes right back to the Great Horse. Um, the Great in Horse England, of England? Uh, yes, the Great Horse of England. And they talk about them going into battles in armour, and uh, the horse wearing an armour and also the rider. So they had to have big horses that carried a lot of weight. Because the armour and the man and all that is about, what, 400 pounds? Or yes, exactly. And then they also use them, you know, for agricultural work and... Um, Which is pulling ploughs. Pulling ploughs and log sniffing and, you know, even today, the English breweries use them for um, cart horses. Are you all used to working with more sort of thoroughbred style horses with the police? Yeah, well, generally our, our horses, probably 50% of them are thoroughbred. You know, obviously they're, they're a fairly hot sort of horse. We're now moving to, to crosses of this type of horse. They've got that, the, the great temperament that'll walk through and push people around and then stand around and let kids crawl over them. You know, they've got to be uh, padded all over the place. And obviously you've got to walk through a crowd fairly passively without having a horse stomping and stirring around and going all over the place. Now we should point out that you're in a very wet climate here, one of the wettest areas in Australia, and you've had some problems with the feet there with water. Yes, we have. It's the mud, really. So a fungal sort of problem? Yeah, a fungal problem, and we treat it with um, various creams, but unfortunately he's still got a bit of the gentian violet there on his yep. legs. So what, what, what are you using? Well, I'm using Pantene. <laughs> <laughs> the expensive way to do something this size. Well, it is. I do try and wait for it to go on special. <laughs> so a robust horse that's very strong. But today, why on earth would you bother? You know, we sell a lot of our horses to people who um, work in Sydney and then they buy five or ten acres in the country and they can't justify buying a tractor. So, um, you know, a draft horse makes a lot of sense to those people. Shoeing is a nasty business with these in that you can't go to the corner store and buy a shoe. No, no, everything, uh, everything as far as the shires are concerned, we have to have made. I mean, we have the shoes made, the lead ropes, uh, everything is made to order because they're too big. Looks pretty comfortable with three on, and he can still move around. Oh, he moves just as freely with three on as he would with one on. You can imagine with a, with a knight with all his armour and all the gear they used to have in the old days. That's what they're bred for. I'm sorry to put you through all of this, Scott. It's, it's pretty tough. <laughs>